I'm going to show you guys something I rarely do. This is my own personal collection of some of my stereo equipment. This is one system. I have more than one. This is not my system with the turntable. This is my digital and cassette setup. I just rearranged everything today, and believe it or not, there's only actually one thing in here I actually paid any money for. Let's take a look and see what I have. Everything else I got was free. Check this out. Hey guys, I just figured I'd give you a little update on what I've been up to today. I inherited this old uh, stereo cabinet. Well, it's an old cabinet of some type. But I thought this would be perfect. I've been trying to figure out what to do with this thing for months. I thought, well, I'm gonna redo my stereo and set everything up on display. And this is what I've come up with. So over here, I've got my, my little uh, digital tuner. This is a Sanjian HD radio tuner that I've put a Bluetooth receiver and that's why the light's flashing because I that's my Bluetooth indicator. I've got my little vacuum tube amplifier here. Yeah, I know it's dusty. This thing's a real dust magnet. But to clean around the tubes in the back, you really have to pull the tubes out. I don't like unsocketing them just to clean it. So it really does, any of these units that have got a, a, like a solid brass chassis or a solid stainless steel chassis, that's polished, they do pick up all the dust, every fingerprint, <clears throat> every speck of dust. So that's the amplifier. Here's my uh, my two CD changers. I got them loaded up with about 100 discs each. So these will just play constantly if I turn it on. This is the one, this is the one I just recently acquired, 200 disc CD changer. And it controls the old one. So say I've got just about 100 discs in each one right now because I I just took out half the discs from one of them to load the other one up so I could set it up. I've got my TAC V850 cassette deck with Dolby BC and DBX. And this is the 75ES that I recently acquired. And uh, the one that had a, a bad head, bad drum, and I was able to salvage another drum and make this one work. So put some lights in this one too so it looks kind of cool. So that's my 75 ES, and of course my good old TAC A3340. This is a um, four track machine. It can run in two track or four track mode. Right now it's currently in four track, but normally we run it like that for just stereo because uh, four channel mode is more if you're using it well for quad or if you're using it in a studio environment, which I'm not. In fact, I don't even use this machine. This is more for show, although it is connected. I can't keep a tape threaded on here, at least I haven't been able to. Maybe I can now, maybe not. But uh, the trouble I had before was I got a cat that likes to eat tape. If I leave this thing threaded up with tape, I will come home and find tape all over the place and I'll be uh, picking it out of my cat's rear end for the next uh, week. I mean, I, it's, I kid you not, I have a cat that loves to eat tape and he will eat it like it's candy. So I can't keep any tapes threaded up on a machine because he will actually just take the tape, he will chew it right off and pull the tape off and uh, snack on it. So this, this is more for show. I can connect it up and use it if I want. Well, it's connected, but I can use it if I want. This tape here though is a bad tape. It's got sticky shed syndrome, so it's not much point. It's more just as a conversation piece. Anyway, that's my stereo. Oh, the speakers, yes. These are speakers I just recently acquired. They are B&W and they are quickly Series 500 B&W. These things are quickly, quickly becoming one of my new favorite speakers. The sound off these things, I wish I could show you, I, I wish I could play this for you guys. Maybe I'll just turn it on just for a second here because I don't want to pull any copyright, but listen to this. It is, uh, they are so bright and so sweet sounding. And I got them for the best price of all for free. In fact, most of the stuff that you see here, I actually got for free. The only pieces I actually ever, that I paid anything for, anything, I bought the amplifier. About, uh, I don't, I guess about 15 years ago. This is a Yakwin, it's a Chinese amp. I know people are gonna knock it, but hey, they came in number two right behind the Dynaco ST70, which is the new, the, the newest version is the Canadian made Dynaco. That amplifier came in number two in the world of all of the tube amps that were rated. And its replacement, this is the MC10, 
Its replacement is the MC-135, identical except for it's got a meter on it and it can take a few different types of tubes. Rated the number two vacuum tube amp that you could buy in 2019. This was rated number two or number three when I bought it. It was very good quality, very happy with the sound off this thing. I retired my Macintosh for that because that blows my Macintosh. I know some people are, gonna, are not gonna believe that, but it actually does blow my Macintosh away because it's modern tube technology using all new, very high tolerance, thin film resistors and a very good quality capacitors. My old Macintosh is a 1966, I think, 66 or 67. It's got the original tubes in it. It's got the original resistors in it. It's got the original capacitors in it. One's been changed. But it's showing its age, you know, it's, it's an old amp. It sounds very good. It sounds probably as good as it did when it was new. But um, the, the thing with these old vacuum tube amps is that the resistors of the day were um, about between 10 and 20% tolerance. So the problem with those is that, especially when they're carbon resistors, is that uh, as they warm up, they change in value. So the problem with my Macintosh is I can turn it on and it sounds great after it's been running for a good hour. So I used to have to turn that thing on and let it preheat for an hour before listening to it because for the first hour, it didn't sound that good and the sound constantly changed. Not the case with this one. High, high, uh, uh, or let's just say uh, high tolerance resistors. You know, they're typically 0.1%. Uh, they're all middle film and um, they are uh, bang on in, in terms of their resistance value. So from the time I turn this thing on, as soon as the tubes warm up, it sounds great. And that's why I've been using this one over the years and I retired my Macintosh. But uh, anyway, I've been, I've been wanting to work on this for a while. I've been, my, my stereo corner has been an absolute disaster for the past year or so. I had to uh, clear out a few houses that, that the, uh, the people went into uh, care and didn't have room. So I got all this crap from old people's homes that I've been trying to get rid of and it was all piled up in my stereo corner. So I finally got around to sorting things out. I set it up with this new stand. And I think it looks great. Thanks for watching.